Uh, good morning, my name is Randall Rader. I'm from Public Works Stormwater Drainage Division. And today we're gonna to be going through the uh, Virginia Class A CDL walk around of a Class A combination vehicle. All right, before we get into this, the very first thing we need to remember is safety. So with that, I'm gonna ensure that my wheels are chalked and my air brakes are engaged. Behind us, we have a, a 18 wheeler with the low boy trailer um, with air brakes and this is an automatic vehicle, so if you were to test on this, you would have a automatic restriction. All right, so the first thing on your test you're gonna do is start at the front of the vehicle, and you're gonna get a, uh, a brief overall look. From here, I'm looking down underneath the vehicle, making sure that the vehicle's sitting flat, no apparent leaks, no debris uh, stuck under the vehicle. From there, I'm looking at the, the way the vehicle sits, making sure it sits level. I'm looking on both the passenger side and the driver's side uh, to make sure there's nothing hanging off uh, any load or any debris also. From here, I'm gonna work my way forward and I'm gonna um, look at my, my front windshield, making sure that I can see no visible stickers on that windshield except for the Virginia State Inspection sticker. All right, much like on the uh, Class B vehicle, the tractor portion of this is gonna be almost identically the same. First thing you're gonna look at is your license plate. Uh, looking for the cleanliness of the license plate, making sure your bolts are in place and actually maybe giving it a slight tug, making sure it is pump, uh, permanently mounted to the vehicle. Moving over in our headlights, checking our headlights and our parking lights, both for clarity and uh, cleanliness. Looking sure they're not cracked, broken, making sure all of our screws or bolts are in place, making sure it's positively mounted. Uh, also making sure there's no condensation in the light uh, which would give off the indication that the light uh, may be cracked or not properly sealed. Also moving here to our uh, parking light turn signal, check it again to make sure that it's positively mounted. Since it's on the front of the vehicle, it must be amber, which is a yellowish orange in color, making sure it's not cracked, broken, check it for cleanliness and clarity, and again, making sure there's no condensation um, in that light. While I'm here, I would also check your top lights, uh, all five of them on this vehicle, making sure that they're mounted, looking for cleanliness, clarity, and also that they're not um, any condensation or any damage to them. Checking my front windshield now, again, making sure there is no other apparent stickers. The only one is the Virginia State Safety Inspection sticker. Looking at the window itself, making sure there's no damage to it, no cracks. Um, and I'm checking for the, the clarity and the overall cleanliness of the windshield. All right, from this point, uh, we're gonna pop the hood. All right, what I'm pointing at right here is gonna be your air compressor and air compressor governor. What you're checking on this is for any apparent damage. You're looking to make sure all the bolts are in place, uh, any excessive rust, any non-factory welds, and then you're also going to be looking at any apparent leaks from any of the hoses uh, coming to or from the compressor itself. I'm looking at my, my belts right here to make sure that they're uh, properly tensioned, uh, that they're not excessively dry rotted, no breaks in them, no gouges. And I'm also making sure that they, uh, no apparent damage, no greases or oils on my belts. But at this point, I'm going to check all my fluid levels, making sure they're all within the uh, manufacturer specifications. Uh, also, my fluid dipsticks here, making sure that they are correct. Looking at any apparent leaks, uh, making sure that uh, there is no leaks. Looking at the hoses, making sure there's no damage, dry rot, um, or excessive bulges on the rubber hoses themselves. And right, now I'm gonna begin the elements of the steering. Uh, I'm gonna check my steering column. I'm looking at it to make sure that there's no damage, uh, excessive rust, any play or non-factory welds. Steering column goes down to the steering gear box. Uh, here's my steering gear box. I'm checking it initially for any excessive rust, non-factory welds, damage. I'm also looking at my bolts, making sure all my bolts are in place. I'm also checking my hoses, uh, looking at the hoses, making sure they're properly tightened, that there's no uh, apparent leaks coming from any of the hoses. From the box, I'm moving down to my pitman arm. On my pitman arm, I'm checking both the top and the bottom connection points. On the bottom, I have a castle nut with a cotter pin making sure that that cotter pin is in place. I'm also looking at my um, connection points for lubrication. I wanna make sure that they are lubricated but not over lubricated. 
Uh, on the actual pitman arm, I'm checking for any apparent uh, non-factory welds, damage, or any bends. Moving down, I'm going to check my drag linkage. Uh, on this, I'm making sure it's not, not bented, bent, damaged, um, any excessive rust, or any um, non-factory welds on it. From here, I'm also checking my connection points for lubrication, making sure that they're lubricated but not over-lubricated. And I'm also looking at my castle nut and cotter pin as well. All right, from there, I'm going to move to my, my front leaf springs. I'm going to check my four points of connection, which would be my rear point of connection. I have the same up front, and I also have my two U-bolts right here. On the U-bolts, I'm going to check the bottom side of them as well, making sure that the nuts are in place, they're tight, and they're, there's no looseness or any play. I'm looking at the leaf springs themselves, making sure there's no damage to the leaf spring. Um, and then if any more than one-fourth are damaged or missing, this vehicle will be placed out of commission. From here, I'm moving to the front shock absorber, checking both my top and the bottom points of connection, making sure that the bolts are in place and tight, looking at the uh, shock absorber itself, making sure that it's not loose, making sure it's not leaking, and that there's no non-factory welds or apparent damage to now it. Now moving in and checking my air components, I'm gonna look at my air brake chamber, looking at the chamber itself for any damage, dings, non-factory welds, uh, possible apparent leaks. I'm looking at the hoses, making sure that the hoses are connected both uh, on the air brake chamber and coming from the vehicle, making sure there's no apparent leaks on the hoses, uh, no excessive uh, dry rot, no cuts. I'm also going to move to the back here and check the slack adjuster. On the slack adjuster, I should have no more uh, than one inch play. Also when the brakes are engaged, it should be at an approximately 90 degree angle. I'm also checking my, my bolts and pins and all my cotter pins on the slack adjuster as well to ensure that uh, they're locked in and in place. All right, from here, I'm looking through my, my little window. I'm looking at my brake pads. Uh, my brake pads, I'm making sure that there's sufficient um, pads to be able to stop this vehicle. I'm also looking internally at the drum, uh, ensuring that there's no foreign matter, that there's no grease, oil, anything inside the brake drum. Moving to the inner rim, I'm checking my inner rim, making sure that there is no apparent um, cracks, dings, dents, any non-factory welds on the rim itself. Now moving to the inner wall uh, of my tire. On my tire here, I'm looking to make sure that there's no foreign matter stabbed inside the tire, making sure there's no bulges, no rips, and I'm looking for excessive dry rot. All right, still with the front tire now, moving around the top, checking the tread depth. Uh, tread depth for front tires is 4 32nd of an inch. I'm also looking all the way around the tire to make sure that there's nothing lodged in the tire as well. Moving to the uh, outside of the tire, the outer wall, just like the inner wall, I'm making sure it's not excessively dry rotted. Uh, no bulges, no cuts, no damage, nothing stuck inside the tire. Moving to the uh, outside rim now, again, just like the inside. Initially, I'm looking to make sure there's no damage, dings, dents, any non-factory welds. Looking at my uh, lug nuts, ensuring all the lug nuts are in place, ensuring also that they're, that they're properly tightened. Uh, indications of rust would show, uh, excessive rust would show that maybe one is loose. Also moving to my front hub and hub seal, ensuring all the bolts are in place and that there's no leakage. From here, I can also see my brake drums. Uh, I'm looking through the brake drum making sure there's no, no foreign matter jammed in there. And I'm also looking for any apparent damage, non-factory welds or cracks on the brake drum. Last thing I'm gonna check is my air pressure. You're gonna find your air pressure uh, valve stem and you would actually check the pressure in accordance with the manufacturer specifications on the tire. All right, from here, I'm gonna check my windshield and windshield wipers. Um, on the wipers, I'm checking for any, any chips, any uh, excessive dry rot, anything that would prevent this wiper from uh, properly cleaning the windshield. And then the windshield, again, I'm making sure there's no cracks, uh, dings in the windshield that's not broken. I'm checking for cle uh, cleanliness and also clarity and that the only sticker is the Virginia State Inspection sticker, which will be in the center bottom of the windshield. Moving to my driver door, I'm looking at both of my uh, side windows as well, checking for cleanliness and clarity, also making sure there's no uh, damage, that the windows are not broken or cracked in any, any manner. Moving and checking my mirrors the same way, checking to make sure they're properly mounted uh, to the vehicle, 
I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna check the mirrors also for clarity and that they're not damaged or broken in any way. Next, I'm gonna check my door. I'm gonna check the swing and weight of the door, so I'm gonna open it, ensure that the door properly swings uh, and that there's no apparent damage internally on the hinges uh, of the door. Moving my way down, I'm gonna check my, my steps. On my steps, I wanna ensure that I have sufficient traction. Uh, there's no oil, anything like that, that could prevent uh, me safely getting into my vehicle. I'm also gonna check the bolts and I'm gonna check that both of my steps are positively safely mounted to this vehicle. I'm gonna check my, my fuel drum, checking my drum. I wanna make sure that there's no damage to it, any dents, any non-factory welds. I'm also gonna look underneath the drum itself make sure that I don't see any apparent leaks. Next I would check is my safety straps, ensuring that they are both uh, properly tightened and that I don't see any, um, any signs that they may be loose and actually rubbing on the tank themselves. From here I'm gonna check my electrical hookup on the truck, make sure that it's uh, properly engaged and hooked up. Um, I'm also gonna move over and just basically check my hydraulic hoses, making sure that they are tightened, that they're not leaking, um, and then I don't see any apparent damage on the hoses, any cuts, any severe bulges. Um, from this point, I'm gonna move to my hydraulic oil uh, tank. I'm gonna make sure first it is properly mounted to the vehicle by checking the bolts. And then I'm gonna move down and also check underneath like I did on the fuel drum, making sure that I see no apparent leaks uh, from the hydraulic drum as well. Lastly, I'm gonna check the straps, making sure that they're properly uh, tightened and mounted and I'm gonna check to make sure that they're not loose uh, by giving them a physical pull. Also, if they were loose and, and moving, you would see uh, apparent um, almost abrasions or shiny metal uh, that, would, that would indicate that they are loose. From this point, I'm gonna move in and check the frame of the tractor. Uh, looking at the frame, making sure anything that is mounted to it, all the bolts are in place, uh, and on the reverse side, all the nuts are engaged. I'm also looking at the frame for any apparent damage, uh, any bends, non-factory welds, possible cracks, uh, or excessive rust. Right, now I'm gonna check my hookups from the, the truck, uh, the tractor, down to the gooseneck. So I'm gonna check my two hydraulic hose connections, making sure that they're connected, they're not leaking. I'm also gonna check the other side now of my uh, electrical hookup. And then I'm also gonna check my air supply glad hands, making sure it's blue to blue, red to red, blue being my service line, red being my emergency line. Right, now that I'm under the vehicle, I'm gonna check my drive shaft. I'm checking my points of connection, my front and my rear. And when I'm checking those, I'm making sure the bolts are in place, uh, making sure it's lubricated. I'm also gonna grab the drive shaft, try and give it a spin, making sure that there's no excessive play. Checking the shaft itself, ensuring that there's no um, non-factory welds, any dings, dents, any apparent damage. And then I'm also going to check for lubrication on the front rear and around the seal, making sure that there's no uh, excessive, uh, that there's sufficient lubrication, but not excessive lubrication. Okay. All right, on the rear axle now, I'm going to have my air brake chambers exactly like on the front, checking the chambers to make sure that the bolts are in place, it's properly mounted. I'm also looking for any apparent damage, um, dings, dents, non-factory welds, and excessive rust. I'm also checking my air hoses making sure that the hoses that are coming to the, the air brake chamber, there's no damage to the hoses, that there's no apparent leaks. On the back side, again, I also have my slack adjuster. And on my slack adjuster here, um, it must be at an approximately 90 degree angle while the brakes are in place. Uh, no more than one inch play, and I would be checking my, uh, my pins and my cotter pins on that as well. From here, I'm gonna move to my leaf springs. On my leaf springs, I'm gonna check my four points of connection again, just like on the front my front point of connection, my rear, which we'll point out in a minute, and also my two U-bolts, which I'm gonna point out right here. I, on the U-bolts, I'm also gonna check uh, that they're not loose moving around. I'm also gonna check the bolts that are down on the bottom. Just like on the front, with the leaf springs themselves, I wanna make sure uh, that the, the leaf springs are not damaged. Any more than one fourth is damaged or missing, this vehicle will be placed uh, out of service. All right, now I'm gonna move in and check my brake pads. Much like on the front, I'm looking at the pads, making sure that there is sufficient brake pad to safely stop this vehicle. I'm gonna check my drum. On the drum, I'm looking for any foreign matter debris. I'm also looking for any oils and greases that would prevent um, good contact between the brake pad and the drum itself. I'm gonna move and check my rim. 
on my inner rim, I'm looking for any dings, damage, uh, dents, and any non-factory welds. The sidewall of the tire on the inner sidewall, I'm looking for any uh, damage to it, any excessive dry rot, any foreign matter that may be uh, lodged inside the tire. Now I'm going to move around and check my uh, tire tread depth. Rear tires must be at least 2 30 seconds of an inch. Uh, I'm also going to check to make sure that there's no debris or foreign matter inside of my, my tread of my tire. Uh, now we have to move in between the, uh, the two tires. Uh, now we're going to talk about the uh, outer side wall of the inner tire. Just like the other side, we're looking for any uh, foreign matter that may be inside, uh, stabbed into the tire, looking for any excessive dry rot, any cuts, uh, any bulges in this sidewall. Now moving in, we're going to check the inner rim. When we're looking at the rim, again, we're making sure there's no uh, ding, dents, uh, cracks, and any non-factory welds. We're also talking about the spacer on the tire, making sure that the spacing is equal all the way around, the spacers are in place, and that there's no foreign matter in between the uh, two tires. Now moving to the outer tire, we're going to look at the inside rim, making sure again that there's no damage to the rim, no dings, dents, cracks, and any non-factory welds. Moving to the sidewall, the inner sidewall of the outer tire now, making sure that again there's no uh, foreign matter lodged into the tire, no excessive dry rot, any bulges, or any damage to the tire. Moving across the um, traction portion, looking at the tread depth, making sure it's at least two thirty seconds of an inch, making sure that there's no uh, foreign matter lodged in between uh, and stuck inside the tire. And now moving to the outer sidewall, we're looking at the sidewall again, making sure that there's no matter stabbed into the tire, there's no damage, no excessive dry rot, any bulges or uh, just any apparent damage to this tire itself. Moving to the rim, again looking at the rim, making sure there's no cracks, dents, dings, or any non-factory welds. Moving in and checking our lug nuts, looking at all the lug nuts, ensuring every one of them is in place and that they're properly tightened. Um, a sign that one of them may be loose would be overly excessive rust. Also moving to our hub and hub seal, ensuring all the bolts are in place, uh, that they also are properly tightened and we see no apparent leaks coming from around it. Last thing I would check here would be the, uh, the PSI for both of my tires by the valves and I would check in and make sure that they are uh, at the proper PSI in accordance with the manufacturer specifications on the tire. Uh, from this point, I'm going to check the drive shaft. Again, I'm looking at the drive shaft, the points of connection, making sure it is properly uh, in place, checking all the bolts. I'm looking at lubrication, uh, ensuring that it is lubricated but not over lubricated or leaking. And then I'm also looking at any apparent damage on the drive shaft. Moving out to the uh, air bellow. The bellow, I'm making sure it is properly mounted to the vehicle. Uh, there's no apparent damage or leaks on this and um, just any excessive dry rot uh, on the rubber portion as well. And then lastly would be the uh, shock absorber and looking at the two points of connection on the rear and up on the top, making sure they are properly mounted. I'm looking at any apparent damage um, or bends in the shock absorber itself or any apparent leaks that would be coming from this. Okay. All right, just as we inspected the uh, front axle, you would inspect the rear axle and all associated uh, equipment and parts the same exact way. From here I'm going to move and I'm going to check the fender. I want to make sure the fender is uh, positively mounted to the vehicle and that it's not in any way touching down or causing uh, a disturbance for any of the tires. Uh, now I'm moving to the mud flap. I'm going to look at the mud flaps ensuring all bolts are in place. I'm going to look at the mud flap for any damage and uh, making sure that there's nothing uh, that's going to cause any issue between the mud flap, the tire, and the ground. Moving around to the rear, I'm going to check my rear license plate. On the license plate, first I want to ensure it's positively mounted to the vehicle through the bolts. I also want to uh, possibly verify that the plate on the rear matches the plate on the front. Um, I'm now move, going to move to my lights. I would check both of my lights, ensure that the uh, positive uh, cleanliness and clarity, making sure that all the bolts are in place. I also want to make sure it is positively mounted to the vehicle itself. All right, this is going to conclude uh, this portion of the inspection for the tractor. We do have a couple more things to talk about on the other side. Now we're going to move on and talk about the gooseneck, the fifth wheel, and the trailer itself.
All right, from this portion now, I'm gonna check the glide plate. I'm gonna make sure all the bolts are in place on the glide plate. I wanna make sure it is well lubricated, and then I wanna make sure that there's no foreign matter or any damage to the glide plate. I'm gonna move under, and first thing I'm gonna check is my release arm. You can give it a pull, make sure it's spring-loaded, but then always make sure that it goes back to the uh, locked place. I'm also gonna check my pin with a cotter pin and make sure that it is in place and that this cannot come out. All right, moving now, I'm going to talk about the fifth wheel and the hookup. I want to ensure that there's no spacing between the, the frame and the fifth wheel. Um, moving around, I'm going to look inside here and ensure that the shank is positively mounted within the fifth wheel um, to ensure that it is coupled in correctly. All right, because this is a gooseneck, gooseneck trailer and not a box trailer, we're going to discuss the gooseneck portion. On this, we're going to treat it just like a frame. We're going to look to make sure there's no damage, dings, um, any non-factory welds or any major bends in this frame all the way around. I'm also going to check my, my points of movement and check the uh, lubrication. If this was a box type trailer, right here I'd have to check the landing gear of the trailer. I would also have to check the, uh, the crank arm and make sure it's properly stowed and a header board to ensure uh, proper safety uh, and security of that header board as well. All right, now we're gonna move down to the trailer itself. Uh, first thing I'm checking on my trailer is my lights. Uh, anywhere there's a light, you need to ensure that it is uh, positively mounted to the vehicle, no damage. Um, you can check in cleanliness and clarity, and you also wanna make sure it's not cracked, broken, and that there's no uh, condensation inside. Also have uh, reflective tape all the way down the side of this, so you'd wanna make sure the reflective tape is in place, and if need be, it should be cleaned off. Also my tie down points, checking all the down the side, checking for my tie down points, ensuring they're properly affixed to the trailer. No damage, no cracks, uh, any structural damage to these tie down points. From this point, I can take an overall look at the deck of my trailer. I wanna check the overall quality of the decking material, uh, making sure it's not damaged. I wanna make sure that anything that is on the deck that could possibly fly off is uh, properly tied down. All right, with checking the decking of the trailer, I also want to check the frame itself. Um, just like on the tractor portion, you'd get down and actually look, checking for structural damage on the frame. You want to make sure it's not bent, uh, any non-factory welds or any apparent damage. You also may look underneath, check the under portion uh, structures of the frame as well. We have the added benefit of having a, a load on this. We have a Bobcat T750. So what we would check here is our points of connection and tie down. You'd want to make sure that the, uh, the load is properly tied down and properly mounted to this trailer. All right, and you would do this through four points, a minimum of four points of connection. Here we have two uh, chains with tie down binders on each side. All right, as we're moving rear, uh, this trailer we have three more dual axles. We would inspect each axle the same exact way as you do a rear uh, dual axle on the tractor portion. All right. from, here, from here, we would continue down checking the top portion of the frame, uh, tie downs, and our reflective tape. Uh, that now brings us to the uh, rear of the trailer. Uh, back here, we have two lights. We have an amber color and a red in color. We're going to check both of them for uh, making sure they're properly mounted, checking for cleanliness, clarity, and any apparent damage to the lights themselves. Next, we're going to check our mud flap, making sure all of our bolts are in place. And we're looking at any damage to the mud flap, making sure it's not dragging on the road and making sure it's not dragging up against our tires. Moving around to the rear of the trailer, we have uh, a couple lights, checking all of our red lights, uh, making sure they are red in color, no damage to the lights. Again, checking uh, cleanliness and clarity. Moving in and checking our, our amber in color lights. Again, making sure they're properly mounted to the vehicle, checking cleanliness and clarity. All the lights, we're looking for any damage any um, condensation would show a possible crack in the light. Moving over, we're checking our center lights as well, making sure there's no damage to them, um, just like all the other lights. Checking our license plate, making sure it's properly mounted to the trailer, giving it a tug, and we're, lastly, we're gonna check our um, license plate light, ensuring the cl cleanliness and clarity and no damage to that light as well. All right, for CDL testing purposes, that would conclude um, a great majority of the inspection. The only thing you would have to check now is anything you have not previously checked on the driver's side of the vehicle. 
for actual operation, you would continue with a full inspection of the passenger side of the tractor and the trailer itself. All right, here we're gonna check our uh, emergency safety equipment. Within here, we have our spare fuses. Moving down, we also have our fire extinguisher. We would check to make sure that it is within the green operating range and our three safety flares, uh, or you could also have reflective safety triangles. All right, this tractor is equipped with a master safety disconnect on the battery. So before you'd be able to uh, activate and use this truck, you need to come over and make sure that that switch is actually turned on. Next, we're gonna talk about our exhaust. Um, so we're gonna move from inside the exhaust system all the way to our stack. And what we're looking for is any holes, uh, any excessive rust or any damage. This would be obvious by uh, apparent soot, which would show that there could be a leak or a hole in the exhaust system. From here, we're moving down to our air brake uh, uh, chambers, uh, tanks, I'm sorry. Uh, we have our primary and secondary air tank. Uh, first, we're going to check and make sure they are properly mounted to the vehicle. We're going to check our safety straps to ensure that they are uh, proper tension. For the tanks, we're looking for any damage, any dings, dents, leaks. Um, and we're also going to check our hoses coming to and from each tank to ensure that there's no leaks or damage. Each tank should also be equipped with a uh, relief valve um, that would ensure that there is uh, nothing in that tank but the air so you'd be able to drain out any apparent water. All right, now under the hood, we have a few more things to describe. We got to talk about our water pump. Uh, with the water pump, we're checking for any dings, dents, uh, damage and non-factory welds. We're also looking to make sure all bolts are in place. Moving out to our alternator, we're checking to make sure that there's uh, all bolts are in place, no dings, damage, dent to the alternator itself. Looking on the back side at the wire hooks ups, hookups, looking to make sure that there is no frayed or damaged wiring. And then moving around and checking our belt, uh, just like on the driver's side, looking at the belt for proper tension, making sure that there's no uh, damage or excessive dry right, rot. Our to engine the belt. coolant, this is where it would go. And you're also looking uh, at the hoses to ensure no damage to the hoses, no apparent leaks, no excessive dry rot. Lastly, you never want to open this when it is. Uh, hot so you would have to either it'd have to be cooled off some models are also equipped with a sight glass so you'd be able to check the level itself all right that concludes the external walk around uh, and safety inspection portion of the class a vehicle at this point we're going to move to the in cab inspection all right when getting into this vehicle we need to ensure three points of connection either two hands or two feet at a time All right, once I'm inside, my safety belt is on. First thing I'm gonna check is my passenger and driver's side mirrors. I wanna ensure that I have maximum um, operating view of my load and the trailer behind me. Next thing, I'm gonna move into my steering wheel. Uh, on my steering wheel, I wanna ensure I have no play, uh, nothing more than uh, two degrees, I'm sorry, 10 degrees or two inches of play. Next, I'm gonna check my horn and I'll check my air horn once we start the ignition up. Now that the pressure is building up, we're going to go ahead and go through uh, the rest of the features on the steering wheel and then we'll talk about the rest of the controls. The left side I have my air horn, I have my cruise control on off and my set cruise and resume and accelerate buttons. On the left side I have my turn signals, I check down left, up is right, my windshield wipers and then lastly push in and ensure the windshield washer fluid works. On top, I also have my four-way flashers. Push forward, engages the four ways. Back would disengage. All right, from this point, I also have my headlights off, my parking lights, and headlights. Once I pull on the control, it'll also turn my brights on. Pull again, turns them off. Have my panel lights, increase intensity, and decrease intensity. Uh, from this point, we're going to talk about all the gauges on the uh, panel here. I have my transmission temperature, currently about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. My engine coolant temperature is running at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. My oil pressure, 
currently approximately about 38 uh, PSI, idling at approximately 700 RPMs, zero miles an hour, my parking brake is engaged. Mid neutral, 8,578 miles, operating at approximately 14.1 volts, fuel is slightly below uh, full, primary air brake um, tank is approximately 118 to 119 PSI, secondary is about 115 PSI. Alright, All right. two more switches, I have a work light switch which is for the rear deck and I also have a parking regeneration switch um, here as well. I have my ignition, moving up to my climate control gauges, I have my fan speed from off to high, temperature from cool to hot, and then my climate control uh, zone from AC to the dash all the way to defroster and back. All right. I also have a few switches here that are used only when you're dropping um, the fifth wheel trailer itself. So for testing purposes, do not engage any of these switches. Uh, one is for the fifth wheel slide and the other is to lock the safety pin in place. Down here I have my uh, PTO switch, which is to engage the hydraulic PTO when you're trying to lower the trailer from the gooseneck. I also have my uh, tractor and trailer parking brake, parking brake for the truck, push to uh, release, pull to apply, same thing for my trailer air supply, push to supply, pull to evacuate. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I'm going to talk about my transmission selection. It is currently in neutral. I would place it, I could place it in uh, reverse neutral, drive, and then you could also downshift from 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd to 1st. All right. At that point, I'll place it back in neutral. All right, at this point, we're going to conduct the uh, air brake leakage test. First thing I'm going to do, uh, ensure my PSI is built up. Both tanks are approximately 120 PSI. I'm going to turn the ignition all the way off. I'm going to press in uh, to release both the truck and trailer air brakes. And I'm going to wait for my initial drop in pressure. At that point, I'm going to press and hold the brake. And I'm going to hold this for one minute, ensuring I have no more than four PSI loss over that minute. All right, ensuring I have no more than four PSI loss over the minute, I'm going to release my brake. I'm going to turn the um, truck, not the engine on. I'm going to turn the indicators back on, allow my PSI gauges to re-engage, and I'm going to begin what's called pumping down the brakes. I'm going to continually uh, engage and release the brake. About 60 PSI, I should get an audible and visual alarm. There's my audible and visual for both tank one and two. Anywhere between 40 and 20 PSI, my brake should begin popping out. 40 PSI is my trailer brake. And approximately 20, my truck brake engaged. At this point, I will start the vehicle up. And I have to build my air pressure back all the way up to approximately 120 PSI. All right, now that we've built the PSI up to about 100 to 120 uh, PSI, next thing we're gonna do is actually test the brakes. So first we're going to check the trailer brake, put my foot on the brake, I'm going to release the tractor brake, which will only ensure the trailer brake is engaged, place it in drive, slightly let off the brake, give it a little gas, and the trailer brake should hold the truck. At that point I'll put my foot back on the brake, place it in neutral, and I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm going to release the tractor brake, I'm going to release, or I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, supply air to the trailer, put my foot back on the brake, place it in drive, and now the tractor brakes should hold. Give it gas, doesn't move, the tractor brakes are holding, place it back in neutral, and pull to uh, evacuate the brakes.
All right, at that point, that will conclude the uh, in cab portion of the test as well as the air brake leakage test. The final thing would be to have your testing evaluator or a spotter get out and check your external workings of your lights. So you would turn your uh, lights all the way on, check your high beams, back to your low beams, your left turn signal, right turn signal, and your four-way flashers. At that point, your evaluator or spotter would move to the rear. It would check your four ways. Again, your left turn signal, your right, and lastly, your reverse lights. All right, so that's gonna conclude our uh, CDL walk around inspection for a Class A vehicle. We went through an external uh, safety walk around. We went through the internal controls, the air brake leakage test, and actually checking the uh, function of the lights on the outside. Remember, safety is always first, and that for testing purposes, you would have to only check uh, one side of the vehicle. For safe operation, daily use, you would check the entire vehicle. Thank you, and have a great day.